Uh, great, thank you for being here. I am here to share a little bit about the work that we got done this year. Every year uh, we do a State of the City Address. I spend about three months putting that together with my team. Uh, Fire Chief Sean Cruget is here, Kelly Latuska of Communications is here. Uh, we spend a lot of time putting together a whole strategy of what the year is gonna look like and then spend nine months uh, plus implementing and moving forward with that. So every year I feel really strongly about reporting out at the end of the year how we have been doing on the State of the City uh, and give an update on the priorities that we established and benchmarked and made a commitment to. And those of you who know me or have done this work with me, you know that the State of the City Address, it, it is like the one speech, every word is written down. Everything is rehearsed and practiced. There is a narrative, there is a story. I feel really strongly about articulating a clear vision every single year. And so, um, and every speech kind of builds on the one that came before. So this was the seventh State of the City uh, speech that we gave, that I gave. Some updates on that. We did set out four key areas this year, economic development, public safety, connectivity, and sustainability. Uh, we have some graphic over here, but I just want to talk a little bit about when it comes to economic development, that was really a very strong thread of the entire speech. We have committed to several different things that are important to report out on. We are in our third uh, highest permit issuing year in a row. We have half a billion dollars of construction happening in the city of Duluth. I'm incredibly proud of our team, of this community, for being at that third benchmark year in a row of permits and construction. Along the way, we also have computerized some of the permitting process to make it easier. We have heard the community share their concern and frustration. Uh, we have worked pro actively with the Chamber and other economic development partners to better understand what we can do. We now have some permitting elements online uh, that took a little bit of time and investment and our team has been exceptional at making that happen. More work will be done on permitting to expedite and keep things moving forward as we move forward. Uh, we are in the process right now of convening the internal and external economic development audit. This was in direct response to the point of growth we are at in this community, not just post-pandemic, but just in general. We are seeing incredible interest and investment from developers, from housing providers, from internal uh, businesses here within the city. So now is the time to make sure that the systems we have in place has a vision that it correlates to the timing of permits we want to get out, that we are expanding our tax base as much as possible because we know that's good not just for business and not just for workers but for the entire community and how the burden of property tax gets shared so the economic development audit uh, is a process that we have engaged Baker Tilly, which is a national leader uh, in doing this work. We have worked with them many times as it relates to TIF and other economic development projects. Uh, Baker Tilly is working with the City of Duluth, with the Port Authority, with the Entrepreneur Fund, with the Chamber, and with Apex, uh, as well as our internal staff. Uh, you will hear more about that economic development audit probably in February, where we will be rolling out some concrete recommendations as a result, and I'm really looking forward to that. We have also worked hard this year to embed uh, equity and diversion, uh, diversity and inclusion into everything that we are doing. Very proud of the work that our city staff did with partners including downtown Duluth and the Family Freedom Center for the BIPOC directory. There were uh, BIPOC pop-up businesses on Superior Street uh, this year. The hard work of building and establishing economic development opportunities for all people and all identities is something we're very committed to. Uh, the work of getting a BIPOC, which is um, uh, a, a directory of businesses that are owned by people who identify as black, indigenous, people of color, people who are GLBTQAI2S, uh, people who want to connect with one another and provide an avenue for those of us who want to purchase from black owned businesses or indigenous owned businesses to know where we can do that. So we're really proud of that BIPOC directory. And also, as it relates to economic development this year, uh, we did the um, Builders and Backers program, funded through the Heartland Forward Initiative, which is based in Bentonville, Arkansas. Um, Heartland Forward invested in the city of Duluth to launch 10 startup businesses uh, through the Builders and Backers program 
really proud of a whole uh, semester of learning that took place. Businesses that started literally just from the idea are now, are now building out expansions in manufacturing in a Proctor garage. Uh, they are doing uh, STEM research with students and actually launching ideas and part of a national network. So very excited about that. And then finally, within the economic development category this year, while not part of the state of the city, I think very indicative of our commitment to our community and our business community, is taking the DITA structure, the MRO structure, which previously had been an $800,000 annual liability, empty, um, and a liability for the city and for DITA, and helped turn that into a $15 million innovation center with Cirrus. I want to thank Cirrus. They have been terrific partners the whole way and really proud that we pushed that through with them. We also worked hard with partners like ST Paper to make sure that that paper plant remains a vibrant part of the West Duluth community and uh, have several other expansions that I just can't talk about yet. So that's economic development. I'm going to share a little bit about public safety, and I do want to thank that Chief Criget is here and also our human rights officer, Carl Crawford, because public safety is expansive in the city of Duluth. This year, we did implement a 10% wage increase for Duluth Police Department. That was agreed upon through a, a two-year budget strategy with the city council last year. We, of course, hired a new police chief, Mike Sanoa, and celebrated the hard work of Mike Tuscan, who left us this year to retire. Um, we we uh, really launched and invested in the community coordinated response model, which is inclusive of social workers and chemical health respondents uh, responding to 911. We convened the mayor's task force of downtown, and that was really focused on public safety for downtown, on vision and investment for downtown, and on activation for downtown. That task force was convened by downtown Duluth's Christy Stokes and Duluth, community, Duluth Superior Community Area Foundation, Sean Flurkey. Uh, we had 13 members of the community. We put together 27 recommendations. I think all of you have probably covered this story. We have about nine of them underway already. Uh, some of the first things we did, especially to support the public safety of downtown, is we uh, hired an additional prosecutor. Uh, with the city of Duluth to help expedite some of the charging of criminal behavior. Uh, we have worked and announced as part of the state of the city an interest in community courts and revisiting the idea that people need wraparound services that are not just about jailing for criminal behavior, but about treating a whole person. And we're excited about the traction that that is getting. Um, the racial bias audit is underway. So we're very excited about that as well. Um, there's many other things that we can talk about for public safety and I will follow up on any uh, questions that you may have. But it is always a big priority for this community. And we do envision that some of the other investments we've made through programs like Love Your Block and some of the work we do with neighborhoods is about investing in neighborhoods and is about ensuring community safety and community awareness. And I think as we move forward, you will see more recommendations coming out from the downtown task force that is especially focused on public safety. Some of the storefront work that we're doing with retailers downtown, these are ideas we want to expand. Um, outside of downtown and also increasing some of the patrol activity that we're doing and working with our public safety staff to make sure that our police and our fire are highly visible, highly valued, uh, and really supported in doing the hard work that they do. I want to talk a little bit about connectivity. Uh, many of you have also been covering broadband. I made a commitment this year that within six years, every single resident and business in the city of Duluth would have access to reliable and affordable internet. Uh, that may be fiber, that may be broadband. Uh, we have a couple of different ideas that we're working on. We have talked publicly and previously about a pilot program in Lincoln Park for 1,900 households. Uh, we are working on collecting the data that we need and getting positioned so that we can actually make some of the investments moving forward that will help make that possible. Uh, we do have some fiber going in already in Lincoln Park as some of the road construction is happening there. We're inserting that. So stay tuned on that. Uh, we have taken uh, Charter and a few other uh, companies to task for what we feel is not providing the affordability and access that we believe all residents need and deserve. 
Um, and so I won't spend a ton more time talking about all of that. Uh, we have been tracking this for a couple of years with you. We've done a community survey. Uh, we've done several presentations to the city council. We have what we think could be a really exciting open source model that would give a lot of consumer choice uh, all, as well as reliability. Uh, across the city and of course we all know that's something all of our kids, all of our families, all of our businesses need. And lastly, I just want to spend a little bit of time on sustainability and then we'll just close it down and see if you have any questions. Uh, this has been a core area of interest for our community as long as I have been mayor and I'm really proud of the fact that the city of Duluth proper, we have decreased our greenhouse gases 32%. Um, it's since 2015, and that is really significant. We have joined the race to zero for 2050. Uh, we are on pace to get there. Our energy systems are, uh, for the downtown steam, it has a plan to completely phase away from coal. Uh, we have also launched our climate action plan, our community climate action plan, and seeing real results there. Last week, I know we talked with Peter and maybe a few others about the RACER grant. It's a million dollar grant that we were given to help evaluate reliability, redundancy in our electrical and water grid systems so that when we have severe weather events like the ones we've had the last couple of weeks, we don't have to be worrying about how we're gonna get water to people and we don't have to worry about how we're gonna be providing comfort systems to people, that we have those systems and redundancies built into place. It takes money to do that research uh, and we're really proud and excited that that is happening. I wanna say that in the city of Duluth, we know that, that all of our constituencies have deep value. This year we have really focused on economic development and public safety and connectivity and sustainability. We picked those four with intention. It was partly a reflection of what we are hearing from people that they want to see action in. It's partly knowing uh, where we can build upon the strengths that we have and leveraging growth for the future. It's partly what are the pieces that it takes to do the things this community needs to do to keep providing services to people as our community grows, to expand the tax base so we're not continually going back to the same sources of income. I'm excited about the work ahead. You'll hear a lot more about that in the next few weeks, in the next few months. We have a new legislative agenda that has just come out. We have new opportunities um, at the federal and state level. We have wonderful relationships with people who represent us. So I'm excited to not just get this work, continue to be implemented and embedded into the work of the city of Duluth, but to build upon it in the year to come. Housing is one of the other areas that we've worked really hard on. There are, um, and this is again in response to knowing where people needed us to be and knowing and recognizing that the housing market is expensive everywhere. Um, but we live here and what we need to do is pay attention to what's happening in Duluth. We took $19 million of ARP funds, American Rescue Plan funds, target that right into straight affordability. We have either built or preserved 400 units of housing. We've actually built 368 new units of 358 new units of affordable housing with that, and then helped to sustain and rehab 40 additional units of affordable housing. So we were very specific about using that money the federal government gave us to help fix the math problem of housing. In addition, we established a housing trust fund in partnership with Duluth LISC. The city of Duluth used $4 million. LISC has brought $12 million into this, and this is to help activate to be, um, you know, uh, low interest, no interest loans, to be first money in, to be bridge financing, um, $16 million that we're, so all told in this past year, $35 million into housing. Um, and we know and recognize that we need housing across many, many different levels. We've talked very specifically about affordability and we've really worked that. We have also used TIF and the tax, um, the housing trust fund to help finance market rate developments and we're gonna continue to do that. And in addition, we did invest, the city council uh, uh, took leadership in this and we did invest in expanded warming center hours. So we know that neighborhoods are, are spaces and places that all people need to have safety and have a place to live. So we think that we're getting good value um, in choosing that and, and investing in housing.